It's your girl, the Grown Woman Gamer, coming at you with another fire commentary. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the different trades that I think would be interesting, particularly for the Lakers. Um, I've been following uh, some of the news channels and folks are talking about the different moves that the Lakers could make um, in order to increase their chances of winning a title this year. So I'm just going to start by saying I don't really think that the Lakers have to make a move. I think that they would be competitive with the team that they already have. Um, They have some great pieces, obviously, in LeBron and Anthony Davis. Their supporting cast, if I was to rate them on a a scale of 1 to 10, I would give them about a a 6.5. So that's where we get into the weeds a little bit with the Lakers. Uh, What effectiveness they might have when LeBron isn't playing. Um, they do obviously a great deal better when LeBron is in the in the game distributing the ball, being an offensive threat. When he goes off uh, the court, their general uh, strategy is just to pass it into one of the bigs. And occasionally you'll get some spot up shooting from people like Danny Green and Avery Bradley and Quinn Cook. Uh, but they could use another offensive threat, somebody who is Uh, more dangerous with the basketball. So um, when looking at the various trades, uh, I've heard a lot of rumors. I've heard that they're looking uh, to pick up Andre Iguodala from Memphis. I've heard that they are interested in Derrick Rose. Um, Darren Collison is an interesting option as well. He's an uh, unrestricted free agent, I believe, who hasn't been playing. He quote-unquote retired from basketball but is considering coming back if under the right circumstances and um, there's one extremely interesting um, opportunity that I will get to at the end of the of this video Um, but I'm just going to talk a little bit about what I think would be the best strategy for them to put themselves in a better position to actually win a championship this year so um, let's start with their supporting cast, the people that I think that they should keep and the people that I think that they could let go of. Um, I'll start with, for me, the most obvious, uh, Rajon Rondo. So I'm going to mention a different player to kind of make my point about Rajon Rondo. So Chris Paul is currently with the Oklahoma, Oklahoma City Thunder. And when he went to Oklahoma after being traded from Houston, You could tell that he was not happy with that. Um, He felt that he and James Harden, I believe, were able to do pretty well. Um, But it was clear to everyone, including myself, that with the team that they had, they probably were not going to be able to win against a healthy Golden State and definitely not against um, the Lakers or the Clippers as they are now. So they chose to trade him for Russell Westbrook And I understand that move. I think that was a good move for Houston. Um, But at the end of the day, that was not going to be the the key move that would solidify them as a Western Conference champion. And it's definitely not going to be the move that puts them over the top so that they actually win an, an NBA title. So here he is in Oklahoma. And the question is whether or not he's going to react to his circumstances kind of like Jimmy Butler did in Minnesota where he just starts acting out and becoming like this problem that they want to get rid of and they're willing to do anything to wash their hands of it. Or if he's going to make um, lemonade out of lemons, which is exactly what he's done. Right now they're a playoff contender and it's largely due to the leadership and the guidance that he's providing to these younger players. So the reason why I mention him is because Chris Paul like Rondo, is an extremely intelligent basketball mind who has experience um, that would be best served on a team where he can kind of guide a player who has more physical um, and athletic ability. Um, I'm Chris Paul, Shai Gilgis, Alexander. Um, That duo is doing really well because Chris Paul is offering that mentorship He still has some athleticism, so when he comes in, he does pretty well. Um, But he is helping move that team forward. And I think he was kind of tipping the the needle in a way that even Westbrook wasn't able to do while he was in in Oklahoma. Um, And it's largely due to the leadership and the basketball IQ that he has. 
Rondo for me is at a stage in his career where his best days playing basketball are certainly behind him. He has kept himself in good shape, so I'm not um I'm not putting him down, but I I want to acknowledge the fact that this dude has been playing basketball for almost 20 years professionally. And LeBron James is a freak. Most people who've played as long as Rondo are on a decline in their career. So the teams where they do best are teams where there's a younger core of players who have that physicality and that athleticism and the youthful legs, but need mentorship, guidance, and maybe the information that a player like Rondo or Chris Paul can give. So I think he would be better served on a different team. Um, They have some amazing coaches on that team, Jason Kidd. Uh, I wasn't really completely sold in the Frank Vogel at first, but he's doing really well, and there's clearly an emphasis being put on defensive effort, and that is making a huge difference with the Lakers. Uh, But Rondo, if they traded him to a team like, let's say, Atlanta, for example, where you have a Trey Young who is doing amazing things with the basketball, but can you imagine how much his game would be elevated by getting the wisdom of a Rajon Rondo? Um, I just think that Rajon Rondo is an asset to any team, but would be better served on a different team. Um, The other player that they could move, um, who's kind of a nice relief player off the bench, is Avery Bradley. To me, Avery Bradley put into a deal is a good option for them just because he is a value add. His um, contract is not that significant, so a new team taking him on would say, okay, we're getting a player who can give us some minutes off the bench. There are probably a few teams in the league where he might be able to start. That's unlikely. Um, But he's not essential, and he can be packaged in with a player Um, like the person I'm about to talk about next, uh, Kyle Kuzma. Um, Here's the big question with the Lakers. Should the Lakers trade a Kyle Kuzma, who is young, um, has his best days ahead of him, and who has demonstrated that he does have an offensive potential that's very high? Um, Right now, it does not appear that Kyle Kuzma is flourishing under the current system that the Lakers have. Um, He has done better when he had more opportunities uh, to touch the basketball um, and to get off good shots. And he's kind of a rhythm shooter in a way. So the more he shoots, the more he makes. And we've seen this year that he does a lot better when Anthony Davis is resting or in the instances where Anthony Davis was injured and he got more playing time. So what that tells me is that, and I, I, before I get to this point, I don't think that Kyle Kuzma is so dead set on getting a championship that he's more interested in making the sacrifice and coming off the bench than he is kind of getting um, his opportunity to shine the way that Brandon Ingram is in New Orleans. So I think he would be happier and flourish more on a team where he has more opportunity to be the go-to guy. Um, he shows, he has, he has demonstrated in many games that he's not afraid of the moment. Um, he's not afraid to take big shots. And if he had the opportunity that Ingram and Ball have in, on the Pelicans, I think he would flourish. I think he would do better. Um, and I just think he overall would be happier. Um, so that still doesn't an- answer the question of whether they should trade him. So I think the trade would have to be really good. Um, the As far as uh, Darren Collison, that's kind of like a non- question at this point because they don't really have to trade anyone to get him the question is whether they should trade him for somebody like Derrick Rose um and the this is hard because LeBron's getting older Anthony Davis is injury prone so do you give up a player who's young who does have some injury issues with his feet but who basically is getting better every year getting stronger every year clearly dedicated to the game of basketball 
um, and who could who could be a, a great piece for them three or four years from now when LeBron inevitably um, will be in decline? Um, or do you go for what you can get right now and try to secure the piece that's going to really push you over the top and put you in position to win the title? Derrick Rose, to me, is that guy if he stays healthy. And thus far in Derrick Rose's career, it hasn't been a question of when, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it hasn't been a question of if he's going to get injured. It's just a question of when he's going to be injured. So will Derrick Rose survive the rest of the season without some sort of debilitating injury and be able to be healthy in the playoffs and contribute at a level that's significant? That's a huge if, and I don't know if I'll be willing to take that risk or if I would go with a player who's younger, who's durable, who does have a few injuries here and there, but always seems to bounce back in a short period of time and come back and contribute. Um, And so I'm torn. Initially, I was like, Derrick Rose would be perfect. Number one, he's a threat with the basketball. He is an excellent ball distributor. He's a fantastic court general. So that question of who can lead the team and really guide the offense when LeBron is not on the floor, you'd answer that immediately with a healthy D Rose and the upside with D Rose when healthy to me is much greater than the best offensive output that you get from a Kyle Kuzma. Um, because of the fact that Derek Rose just makes the players around him better. Um, and he's just, he has more experience and he's a smarter basketball player. And sometimes when it comes down to playoff basketball, athleticism is trumped by basketball intelligence, basketball IQ, good coaching and defense and just really playing the long game. Um, And if, if Derrick Rose was healthy, I think it would be a sure bet. Um, But something that I heard on one of the uh, sports shows, I think it was Stephen A. Smith. He mentioned somebody who I just didn't even think about, but um, Schrader from, uh, from uh, the OKC Thunder for Kyle Kuzma would be an excellent trade. That's the best trade they can make. To me, um, Schrader is like a Derek, a healthy Derrick Rose. Right now he's averaging 19 points a game. He is extremely smart, extremely consistent. He has good uh, basketball IQ. He can lead an offense. At, he can lead a second string offense. He can play within a system. And one thing about him, if you notice, if you I follow him in Atlanta, I've seen him play. I watched him play in the playoffs last year um, in Oklahoma. And if you're watching him now, he's a player who plays with a lot of guts, but not a whole lot of ego. And that is the type of player that the Lakers could use right now. A player that will come in and say, I know what my role is. I'm comfortable with that. I will come off the bench. I'll start. I'll play defense. What type of offense do I need to work within? Um, Do do I need to be more of a ball distributor? Um, And I just don't think that he would miss out on an opportunity to take advantage of playing on a team that is destined for um, either a title or at least the Western Conference Finals. So if I were in the position to make that trade, I would definitely do it. I would give up Danny Green. I would give up Avery Bradley. I would give up Kyle Kuzma. And I would give up Rajon Rondo in exchange for Schrader and maybe some picks. Or if they can if they can squeeze one more player out of that situation, even better. So that those are my thoughts on the Lakers. Um, I'm hoping that... I'm really hoping the Lakers can win a title with everything that happened with Kobe. Um, that would be an amazing and kind of historical win uh, for not only just the Lakers and LeBron James, but also the NBA. And it's just, I don't know. I mean, it, you couldn't write it any better. But anyway, those are my thoughts. I am looking forward to seeing what happens in the next 24 hours. Please like uh, this video. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It's all good. Leave your comments. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter, on Twitch on Instagram and here on YouTube, my social media handles at Grown Women Gamer on all platforms. Thank you so much for your time and I hope that you have an excellent day. Peace.